Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about a really fun topic, and that's the hamstring muscle group. And yes, we're going to be talking about the origins, the insertions, innervations, and actions, but the hamstrings are really cool because they actually facilitate two important functions or actions, and we're going to talk about those in this video. Now, before we go into any of this, I want to give you kind of a good reason to understand the hamstrings. Okay? And this was something that was confusing to me for a really long time when I was an undergraduate. So this right here, this is Eddie Hall, literally the beast. He's doing a really he heavy deadlift. Okay? And we always hear that deadlifts are exercises that work the hamstrings. Now, when most people think of the hamstring muscles, at least when I first thought of them, I thought of them as knee flexors. Now, when you do a deadlift, your knees aren't flexing. And I thought to myself, well, how the heck is a deadlift working the hamstrings? And we're going to answer that in this video. Okay? It's because the hamstrings, at least most of them, all but one of them, are actually two joint muscles. And so they're going to have two actions. One of them is knee flexion. The other is going to be hip extension, which is worked in a deadlift. And we'll talk about how that occurs. All right. So recall that the intermuscular septa, recall that the, these uh, branches of the deep fascia within the thigh, divide the thigh into three functional compartments. And actually we see those right here. So this is a cross section of the thigh right here. Here's our anterior compartment. These are our knee extensors. This would actually be where the quadricep femoris muscles are. Here we have the medial compartment. These would be the adductor muscles. And then in the posterior compartment, which is where we are now, these are the hamstrings. Right? Now, in terms of looking at the three individual hamstring muscles, we can tell roughly which ones are which uh, by locating the adductors. Because we know that the adductors are medial, so in this picture the right side is going to be medial, left side is lateral. Therefore, this hamstring muscle right here, this is actually going to be the biceps femoris. And the biceps femoris is actually a two-headed muscle, therefore the name biceps. So the bigger one right here is going to be the long head, and this one's going to be the short head. But the biceps femoris are the lateral hamstring muscles. And then these two medial muscles over here would be the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus. And on the next slide, we'll get a better look at these. Okay. Now, when you're differentiating between the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, it's actually less useful to order them from medial to lateral because depending on where this cross section was taken, um, these muscles may actually be flipped because at one point they more or less cross over each other. So it's actually not as useful to learn them as medial and lateral. They're both the medial muscles. What's more useful is to actually consider their insertions. And so in order to do that, Let's actually take a look at this image over here. All right, so here's our hamstring muscles, all three of them. And again, the biceps femoris is going to have two heads, so we need to consider both of those. All right, so when we're looking at the long head of the biceps femoris, it's going to have its origin at the ischial tuberosity. And this is why it's the long head, because it extends much farther upwards or proximally. And so it's going to originate all the way up here um, on the pelvis at the ischial tuberosity. And if we look at it, we can see the muscle is going to extend downward, and then it's going to insert on the fibular head, or the head of the fibula. When we look at the short head of the biceps femoris, it doesn't extend up nearly as far. It's actually going to originate only on the linea aspera of the femur. Remember, the linea aspera is a crest on the posterior aspect of the femur. So it, the short head does not go all the way up to the pelvis. That's going to play an important role later on. But it's going to originate on the linea aspera, but it's also still going to insert on the head of the fibula. All right. Now, let's look at these other two the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. So semitendinosus is here in blue, semimembranosus is here in yellow. Um, you'll notice that the semitendinosus for most of this is actually going to be the superficial muscle, whereas semimembranosus is deeper. Now even though they originate the same, they actually insert a little bit differently. And actually, this is actually where their name comes from. So the semitendinosus inserts on the medial surface of the tibia, inferior to the condyle, so inferior to the medial condyle. The semimembranosus inserts directly onto the medial condyle of the tibia. But what I want you to notice here, and I'm going to zoom in, is the nature of that insertion. Okay, let's actually go right down here. 
if we look at the semitendinosus, the blue one, let's look at its insertion. Look at this tendon. Okay? It looks like a rope, exactly what we'd imagine a tendon looks like. Okay? For the yellow muscle here, semimembranosus, look at the insertion down here at the bottom. It looks more membranous. Okay? I mean, it does eventually kind of go down to a tendon-like structure, but again, it's more membranous up here. All right? That's where the name comes from. The semitendinosus, its insertion is much more of a tendon-like structure, whereas for the semimembranosus, it's more membranous. Okay? Um, and if you're able to see that, that can help you differentiate between these two muscles. You'll also notice for the insertion of the semitendinosus, this tendon, it actually forms a lot higher up than that of the semimembranosus. So it's much thinner right here and then traverses down all the way to the medial condyle of the tibia. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. But that can help you differentiate between those two muscles. Now, in terms of their innervation, we kind of already mentioned this in the video on the sciatic nerve, but uh, for the biceps femoris, that is the long head, semitendinosus and semimembranosus, their innervation is all for the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. So I'll go to this slide again, but here's our sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is composed of two halves. We have a tibial portion, which is the more medial one, and a common peroneal or common fibular portion, which is the lateral one. And you can see here that the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, long head of the biceps femoris, and actually the hamstring part of the adductor magnus are all innervated by the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. Whereas the short head of the biceps femoris is the only one of these that's innervated by the common peroneal nerve. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the actions of these muscles. And to understand the actions, we really need to look at the origins. And so to start, we'll look at these two, semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The actions, there's two of them, hip extension and knee flexion. Okay, yes, we can get a little bit of medial rotation of the knee, so the medial rotation of the tibia on the femur, but we're not really going to consider that here. It's very minor. Hip extension and knee flexion. But when I think of hamstrings, I usually used to think of knee flexion. Okay? That's what most people think of. But they also facilitate hip extension. How do they facilitate hip extension? How are they doing the same motion as the gluteus maximus? Well, notice they originate on the pelvis. They originate somewhere on the hip. That is the ischial tuberosity. So therefore, they span two joints. They're two joint muscles. Okay? So not only can they flex the knee by nature of their insertion, but they can also extend the hip by nature of their origin. In other words, they originate proximal to the hip joint, but distal to the knee joint. And so therefore, they're able to affect two joints, knee flexion and hip extension. So when you do a deadlift, you're not doing a knee flexion. There's no knee flexion in this movement. There is a very powerful hip extension, though, and so that's why deadlifts work the hamstrings. It has nothing to do with the knee flexion. It's all in the hip extension, and it has to do with the fact that they're two joint muscles. Now, when we look at the biceps femoris, we have to be careful if we're talking about the long head or the short head. And I probably should have actually uh, made this action a little bit different. Let's look at the long head first. The long head also originates on the ischial tuberosity, so we would expect the long head to also facilitate uh, a hip extension and knee flexion, and that's exactly what it does. We get knee flexion, and extending the thigh means hip extension. It does both of those, just like semitendinosus and semimembranosus. However, let's look at the short head of the biceps femoris. Does this one span two joints? No. This one does not go all the way up to the hip. This one actually terminates on the femur, that is the linea aspera of the femur. So the short head of the biceps femoris does not span two joints. This one only spans the knee joint. Therefore, the, the short head of the biceps femoris only works knee flexion. So out of these four muscles, or really three muscles with the two heads up here, only the biceps femoris long head and the semitendinosus and semimembranosus facilitate hip extension and knee flexion. Short head of the biceps femoris is only knee flexion because it does not span the hip joint. Now, 
That being said, if you're doing deadlifts, you're working all of these except the short head of the biceps femoris. To really effectively work the short head, you'd have to do some kind of knee curl where you're actively doing a knee flexion. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. You should also notice that there's a portion of the adductor magnus, it's actually a medial and deep part, uh, that actually facilitates some of the motions of the hamstrings. Um, it's synergistic with them. Um, it facilitates really the hip extension part of the hamstrings actions. Um, but one thing to note about this part of the adductor magnus is it's not actually considered a true hamstring muscle. I should clarify this. It's synergistic with the hamstring muscles in the sense that, it's, that it uh, assists with hip extension. However, it is not a true hamstring muscle, it's considered an adductor muscle. But it is innervated, that part of it at least, by the sciatic nerve, just like all of these true hamstring muscles. Okay, So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the hamstring muscles. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.